Welcome to a special edition of Badminton Unlimited. Today, it's all about the Yonex All England Open 2018. Coming up, our expert commentary team shares with us their best memories from Arena Birmingham. My moment of the tournament was the Agcocks in their second round match against the Korean pair. We know who can be tough on court, but whose name is the toughest to pronounce. Tai Tuz Yu Ying. And we find out more about the history of the beautiful game of badminton. This is what badminton players looked like in the uh, early 1900s. The 108th edition of the Yonex All England served up five days of world-class action. Here is a daily diary of the headlines that came out of Arena Birmingham. Day one, first round opening match and Canada's Michelle Lee stunned third seed Ratchelot Intanon of Thailand in a tight finish. I feel like I make pressure on myself. It's okay, I have to learn more and yeah, it's also new experience for me. I think it's more of a mentality game for me. It's time I kind of went in and just kind of had more confidence and just, um, just play my game and I think that really worked for me. The seeds continued to fall as Bulgarian sisters Gabriela and Stefani Stoyeva prevailed over sixth seeds Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu of Indonesia. We still cannot believe it. <laughs> we just go and play. That, that was the, the reason that we go in the court. Not for win, just for uh, enjoying the game. <laughs> Normal service resumed, with top seed Tai Chu Ying recording her eighth consecutive win over India's Saina Nawal, China's Lin Dan breezing past Denmark's Hans Christian Solberg Wittinghus, and the second seeds of the women and men's doubles also getting safely through to the second round. It was a mix of fortunes for the third seeds. In men's singles, Kidambi Shrikanth narrowly avoided an upset against tricky Frenchman Bryce Leverday, coming through 22-20 in the deciding game. Hong Kong mixed doubles duo Tang Chun Man and Su Ying Sweat lost to Japanese youngsters Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino despite leading a game in 179. Day two continued the drama of the first day. The biggest casualties were mixed doubles top seeds and three-time winners, Tontawi Ahmad and Liliana Natsir. The Indonesians succumbed to their compatriots, Havis Faisal and Gloria Emanuel Wijaja in a lung-busting third game that finished 30-29. We near, nearly to win, then uh, make mistake. We already uh, senior, I think we can do when we when when tough when points same we can concentrate and we can win. But we try the best for today. They they more luck than us. The lament was much the same for the men's singles third seed Kidambi Shrikanth, who squandered two match points against unheralded Chinese Huang Yu Xiang. Both the matches I played here, I, I couldn't really start well, but then came back really well in both the games but I uh, you know this round I think uh, after 2018 I should have done much better there I missed out on my easy points. Defending champion Lee Chong Wei avoided embarrassment needing an hour to beat a determined Lee Dong Kyun. The Korean leveled the game at 17 all before the four-time champion showed who was the master on the court. I never lost in uh, this Korean Open and I think in the first game and uh, I win uh, quite easy and uh, over in second game, I think he more confident playing and uh, he win the second matches. And I uh, just try and uh, every shot in the th third matches. Tomorrow, I think, uh, versus uh, Linda, and I uh, hope so I can uh, enjoy in tomorrow matches. Women's singles Olympic silver medalist, Pisala V. Sindhu, successfully negotiated her place in the last eight. But at 18 all in the deciding game, things could have turned out very differently. Pisala V. Sindhu, who comes through in a very, very close three-game encounter. Day three, quarter-finals, and we're down to the business end of the competition. In the women's singles, Tai Tzu Ying, who had yet to drop a game, remained on track to defend her title. 
On the other hand, Husala v Sintu survived an 84-minute match against World Championship's nemesis, Nozomi Okahara. This time also, I think I was down and she was leading like 16-12. I just thought that, you know, I shouldn't give up that, that way and each point is important for me. And I fought that way and I uh, took it. So I'm, I'm happy that I actually fought back and won the match. For her efforts, Pisala will face another top Japanese, Akane Yamaguchi, who held off Carolina Marin of Spain with relative ease. Home favourites Chris and Gabrielle Adcock's campaign came to an end at the hands of Japan's Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino. But it was a commendable effort by the English pair, considering they had only one week of training prior to the tournament due to Gabby's ankle injury. It's been great to get back out there and get to a quarter-final, but obviously um, we're never satisfied unless we're winning these events, and um, especially to end on a performance like that, um, we've played a lot better throughout the week. A double winner on day three was Christina Patterson. The 31-year-old superstar teamed up with Matthias Christensen at lunchtime and then returned to play the last match of the day with Camilla Ritter-Yul. One of the big upsets was that of women's doubles top seeds, Chen Jingchen and Jia Yifan at the hands of Japan's Shiho Tanaka and Koharu Yonemoto. Mads Conrad Peterson and Mads Pilu Kolding produced an improved showing to demolish 2017 runners up Li Jun Wei and Liu Yu Chen. Awaiting the Danes in the semi finals were none other than top seeds Marcus Vinaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukumoljo. Meanwhile, in men's singles, Xu Yuqi came up tops in an all Chinese affair against the more experienced Chan Long. The match of the day, though, belonged to Li Chongwei and Lin Dan. The Chinese superstar had all the answers to outsmart his arch rival in straight games. I think today I tried uh, very best and uh, spot a win or lose. It's okay. I, and uh, I just I try next year. We'll continue with the last two days of action in a bit, but for now, let's move away from the courts to the grandstand. We know the players play tough, but how tough is it to pronounce some of their names? Tai Chu Ying. Tai Chu Ying. Tai Chu Ying. Tai Chu Ying. Rat Chanok Rat Rat Intanon, <laughs> 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 Line Hodge Mark Kajir's Field. Line Hodge Mark Kajir's Field. Line Hodge Mark Kajir's Field. Nina Hoy Mark Kajir's Field. Nina Hoy Mark We continue our diary of the Yonex All England Open, day four and 10 matches were played over two sessions. Here is the best of the action from Super Saturday. The incredible journey of the unseeded Japanese pair of Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino continued as they beat yet another seeded opponent, Dang Nan and Lee Ying Wei, after an entertaining two-game tussle. The unseeded team ranked 48 
fifth in the world have beaten their third seeded pair. 我觉得可能刚开始的时候我开局才开球吧，开球做的不是很好，然后在后面第二局可能稍微都好一些了，但是，但我跟李云飞可能配合相对来说，有一些小的环节还是有，呃，不流畅的地方吧。The young Japanese pair will face Zheng Su Wei and Wang Yajong after they won a thriller against Christina Pedersen and Matthias Christensen. Defending champions Marcus Finaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukumuljo survived a late rally from Mads Pilar Kolding and Mads Konrad Peterson to book their place in the final. Joining the Indonesians were another Danish pair, Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen. Today we were, I think we were favourites and uh, controlling uh, the games in, in semi-final at Old England is always difficult but we have a lot of experience so I don't think we went to court nervous today. Last year's runners-up, Camilla Ritter-Yul and Christina Pedersen too had to call on their experience after conceding two match points to eventually defeat Japan's Maya Matsumoto and Wakana Nagahara. We, we tried to fight our very best and that's what we talked about before the match and I think that's the reason why we, we still had the chance even though we were a bit too behind the two three points in the, in the second set. The other semi-finals saw Sayaka Hirota and Yuki Fukushima coming out tops in an all-Japanese affair. World number one, Tai Tu Ying was relieved to battle another day after Chun Yu Fei extended her Chinese Taipei opponent to three games which spanned 64 minutes. And there it is, her title defense still intact. 我觉得到第三盘，其实我们两个都，呃，消耗了蛮多的体力吧。就是最后就是在比看谁的球可以更有稳定性，对，然后就是还好自己后面有坚持住。The other semi-final was another topsy-turvy affair. At 13-7 up in the third game, it looked like Busala V. Sindhu was on her way to victory until a change of mindset from the 20-year-old Akane Yamaguchi turned the tide in favour of the Japanese. In the men's singles competition, Su Yu Ji was a comfortable winner over Son Wan Ho, while his compatriot Lin Dan beat Wang Yu Xian to move a step closer to his seventh All England title. Day five, and there were five mouth-watering finals lined up on Super Sunday. First up was the mixed doubles. Zheng Su Wei and Wang Ya Chong were the favourites given the fact that they'd only lost once since teaming up last November. But it was the young Japanese Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higashino who delivered when it mattered most. The women's singles final featured the top two seeds, Tai Tzu Ying and Akane Yamaguchi. The 20-year-old Japanese inched ahead in the closing stages of the first game, but was helpless as Tai upped her pace and tenacity. All out attack by Yamaguchi, trying to win it. That's good play. I think I don't have enough strength to solve it quickly, so I can just play very calmly and continue to run with him. Because I don't have enough strength to beat him very quickly. 
The level of play escalated in game two with some punishing rallies that left both players bruised and battered before Ty surged ahead to take the crown. Both of them have had a dive now. The men's singles final was another compelling affair. 22-year-old Su Yuji and his compatriot Lin Dan, who is 12 years his senior, were evenly matched in the first two games. Then you have to run. Alfred Overt by Lin Dan. The match then took a surprising turn in the deciding game. I think the third game, my mental state was a little nervous. A few mistakes, a lot of mistakes. He also showed his old age, old age, old age, and old age. I think the third game was a little more confident. I just said, I'm still young, 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 I'm still young. In the women's doubles, Camilla Ritter Yul and Christina Pedersen put up a dominant performance that saw them lead most of the first game and come back from 10 13 down to take their well deserved and long awaited All England crown. Oh, the dive! Oh, and another dive! And they've got it back! <laughs> what a rally! There's so many emotions. Uh, we are so happy finally to, to take one of the really, really big titles. Uh, not to be the combination that's always uh, end uh, up a second. Marcus Finaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjayo Sukumuldo wrapped up the championship in style, producing yet another excellent display and snuffing out the challenge of Danish pair of Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen in 42 minutes. Well done it. What a way to finish the kill from Kevin Sanjayo Sukumuldo. Oh. The Olympic champion may have breezed past our fun questions, but we're sure he, or most of us for that matter, would have been left scratching our heads when it comes to the history of badminton. So, against the backdrop of the recently concluded Yonex All England Open, we took our cameras to the National Badminton Museum in Milton Keynes and discover how it all started for the shuttle game in England. 
there is a, a house which is privately owned by the Duke of Beaufort. Uh, it's got a big estate, um, which is called Badminton House. And the story goes, whether it's correct or not, that in um, 1860, had a party there, and it started to rain, so they had to go indoors. They went into the, um, the big hall, and they put a string across from the fireplace to the door, and there was, they picked up some of the, these battle doors that the, the girls had been playing with, and hit it, hit, hit it around. That, that's the, and that's where the name, we, we absolutely certain, I think, that that's where the name comes from. Because where would it come from anywhere else but Badminton? And there's this village, Badminton, yeah. They played with um, these battle doors, and the, the, they're the rackets, uh, with vellum on, and then you, they had uh, shuttles which were, were fairly large, uh, you can see from pictures down here, you know, they used to, I mean, the, the idea was to keep the shuttle in the air as long as possible, not, you know, hitting it at each other, it was uh, just to keep it up. It had probably been there about a hundred years, and uh, it's a sort of halfway house, if we call it, so it's got vellum one side, and instead of having it on the side, they've got strings. So it's an advance, and then of course you come onto these uh, uh, wooden rackets. Now these are what we call what we call presses, which keep the rackets straight, because the wooden ones with the tension in the strings tend to warp, and they, they come over like that. This one is is more usual. I had one I remember the first one I played with. Um, I had it for about two years. This one is rather special. Well, it was made in about 1899. And it's what we call a barrel shuttle, because it looks like a barrel. And it was that type of shuttle that was used in the very first All England. You can see the development along here, all sorts of different ones. That one is 1910. The first All England was played, in fact, at the London, London Scottish Regiment Drill Hall. It wasn't called the All England, it was um, I think it's called the Bamberton Association Tournament, but it eventually came, in, I think it's 1901 or 1902, it became the All England. This is what Bamberton players looked like in the uh, 1900s, early 1900s. Uh, long skirts, we say they couldn't have moved, but if you look, look at some photographs down here, they're actually jumping off the ground to play. So, yes, they did move a bit more. And this is the, uh, the gentleman's play, in the long trousers. Uh, that's an England blazer. It was quite the thing in the early 1900s to, for the internationals to wear blazers. They've all gone now. They don't have those. They have the uh, tracksuits. That's about all the time we have on this week's show. But before we go, let's hear what were the best memories our commentators took home from Birmingham. Oh, there's no question my moment of the tournament was the Agcocks in their second round match against the Korean pair. They were 14-19 down in the second game. They'd won the first game and the crowd were right behind them. It was a terrific atmosphere and they came back to win that second game, 23-21. The atmosphere, the play, everything was just superb. I think uh, women's singles against uh, Yamaguchi and uh, Sindhu was an awesome match. It was really fought tooth and nail. There's another diagonal. Oh! Fabulous smash from Pusala and Carter Sindhu. My moment for 2018 All England Open was when Lee Chong Wei played Lee Jong Kun. And it was really, really close. Lee, Lee Chong Wei had a stranglehold over the opening game. He took the game 21-6, lost the second game 21-13, but then came back. And there were several moments in that third game where there was just a, a sort of a, a hush all around the arena because of the expectant crowd were really nervous and their, their defending champion was under, under the cosh. And suddenly there was a point sort of midway through that deciding game where Lee Chong Wei just, just bound out, made some incredible saves at full length stretches. There was like two or three consecutives in one game. And the whole roof lifted off this venue seemingly because he saved the point, went on then 
to win and it was just a really really tense affair and he came through and that for me was just mesmerizing frankly to watch this brings to an end another edition of badminton unlimited next week chinese taipei doubles player li yang invites us to spend a day with him on his day off in the meantime Remember, you can log on to bwfbadminton.com for all the latest news in the world of badminton. Bye for now.